Since 1983, fame has helped business and education work for Maine. Contact the authority, the Finance Authority of Maine. You're watching Maine Biz Sunday, Maine's business news source. We're back to continue the discussion of the 2010 Measures of Growth Report with our panel, Lori Lachance, President and CEO of Maine Development Foundation, Tony Payne, Executive Director of the Alliance for Maine's Future, Senator Chris Rector, the ranking Republican on the Legislature's Joint Standing Committee on Business, Research and Economic Development, and Betsy Beeman, President of the Maine Technology Institute. Okay. Um, you know, we had a, I have a whole list of things I was supposed to go through here, and lots of charts and graphs I'm going to get to, but I want to get, maybe we're going to stay on more of the general conversation first, because I think that we really have some energy about that. I want to back up, and, and, and Laura, you didn't have a chance to kind of weigh in on the one question about if you were a stockholder and this was Maine's annual report, uh, how would you feel about your investment? Would you buy, sell, or hold? Tell us how you would do it. Well, I'd keep my stock in okay. Maine, and the reason I would is, as I look around, I'm thinking about investments for the long term, not mm -hmm. for a short-term gain, but for the longer term. And I think over the last 10 to 15 years, we've made some very good decisions and some very good progress in basic underlying structural things like higher education. People all understand now how critically important it is. And we're starting to get all the sectors working together, all the different organizations. Um, R&D the same way, critically important to our future. Those two items are tied most closely to income. And we've got to wait for those investments to pay off. And I think they will pay off for me. Yeah, that it, it reminds me of kind of the, so God, when was it? The 2000 or the 90s when the, when the, uh, the 31,000 kind of formula came out. The 30% yep. of our population of 25 and older with a bachelor's degree and, one, and an investment per worker of $1,000 in research and development. That was one, the two most significant indicators. So, and uh, go I ahead. Would, I would say, even following up on that, that we don't have to wait because it's happening. I mean, MTI-funded companies um, all pay, on average, pay a significantly higher wage than the average main company. A lot of the companies we're funding, uh, we've seen over the last two years when the general economy has been poor, they've been growing. Um, Harbor Technologies, FHC in Bowdoin, Ocean Renewable Power Company, many of you might have read in the paper recently, they are putting the largest tidal power turbine off the water in Eastport. Um, these are companies that have, have, are growing, they're paying higher wages than the average main wage, and they are helping build a vital economy that's globally competitive as well. I, I got it, I got it. But in the middle of all of that too, Plant closing. The headlines aren't so much on that. Plant plant closings. 300 jobs lost here. 400 jobs there. Uh, the, the national and state uh, unemployment rates are high. All those kinds of things. So hold on. So, but in that, then, <laughs> right? if, if small business is really the engine, they're not investing. They're holding back. They're still holding back. How can? How do we? How do we? Tell that message, I guess. I, that's what I like about this. This report is so solid and objective. And you're right. It's about the long term. But how do we make that short term message too that we need to that we need to sell? Well, what do you think the biggest issues are that a small business faces, much like a big business? Yep. The red flags in this report. Okay. The cost of health insurance right. is killing small right. business. Mm -hmm. The cost of energy is killing small business. Um, the other costs of doing but business... But they're seeing the red flags and saying, I'm not going to do anything. This state's in terrible trouble. You guys are saying, wait a minute. This is a happy report. This is a good report. I'm not saying it's a happy report. Well, no, but I mean, I'm it has good things to say. We know what we need to work on. Right. Okay, good. Now we're beating people over the head with... This is what you have to do. Right. If you want to move towards that vision of a high quality of life, you've got to start by reducing so the that's and, it's, and it's not stopping small businesses in their tracks. We just finished a seed grant round, and we had 50 applications for seed grants in that round. It was one of the highest, um, highest application rounds mm -hmm. in terms of numbers as mm -hmm. we've had. So folks are still investing in innovation. They're still looking to bring new technologies to the market. And they have to co-invest with us. They have to match our funding one to one. So there is, there is uh, excitement and enthusiasm taking place, and there's innovation taking place and investment. Um, so we're seeing, we're seeing a lot of seeing activity, and we're seeing also um, the results. Uh, uh, Tony, uh, I wanted to ask you. We just you, need to see more. Well, we do. <laughs> and, and, and Tony, you were mentioning when we were on break about the, the, the real issue, and everybody kind of chimed in when you said it too, that skilled workforce, that kind of education and skilled workforce mm -hmm. need. And that certainly gets hammered home here, the, the need for the post-secondary, the higher education. but. You also were just saying, what happened to that company and they went to New Hampshire? <coughs> and Why? They went to New Hampshire, I'm sure, for a plethora of reasons. Okay. But the biggest one that was stated in, in this conversation was lack of skilled workforce for the jobs that they have to create. They're a high-end employer, high-margin employer, and they are a low-impact employer in terms of environment. Great, great company profile. But here's one of the things that gets in the way, and this is the, this is the um, 
getting away from the from the long term vision okay. is the interim activities that you get from a legislature. Currently, there's a bill in front of the legislature that would mandate paid sick leave for all empl mm -hmm. all employers right now over 50. Um, well, what's the message? What's the message? We're going to be the only state in the country to mandate paid sick leave, and that freezes capital. That freezes decision making of people who are either thinking about getting to 51 employees or expanding or relocating to Maine. We put up our own barriers and we have created a reputation that is self-fulfilling. So that company that may be thinking about coming to Maine is not going to go look to the managers of growth report and say, wow, they're trending the right way and I like the infrastructure and they get the, they're making major changes at the functional they're un foundational un level? They're unreliable. Okay. So how do we change that message? Or are we changing? I mean, I guess that's, I know that, well, Senator, you're interested in that. I, I was going to mention uh, a couple of things that we've done, because access to capital is another major okay. issue. And Good. we've we've got two bills before us that are going to improve uh, access to capital here in, in Maine. And I think that's incredibly important, because uh, that early stage capital investment is challenging for everybody to get. And it's not just talking about banks, it's other things. So we need to have good access to capital. Okay. Uh, I guess, too, in terms of how do we balance that then? I guess I'm, I think we're going to run out of time for the segment about that, but I wanted to close on that because we can spend more time in the afterthoughts talking about more of the detail. But how do we balance the messages? I mean, I, I, Laurie, I, I appreciate what you're saying because it is. It's like, here's the foundation. How do you keep those foundational things going forward? And I mean, clearly, we, this is one of the worst budget years well, ever, right? Uh, and how do we do that and without cutting? education too much to the bone right. without work, cutting our legs out from under our research and development. How do we balance? It's our opportunity to innovate, I think, as a state, as, as communities, as school districts, as a university system. It's, our, it's not only our opportunity, it's a mandate that we are going to have to innovate and do things differently. The budget situation is not uh, trending uh, in, a, in an abrupt change. We are in a long-term pattern of uh, challenged uh, uh, revenues for the state, so okay. we really have to do things differently. And I would add to that the importance of continuing to measure, and not only measuring the very high-level measures like measure of right. growth, but in the R&D area we have this um, annual comprehensive evaluation of, of how are our policies and how are our investments performing okay. and what can we learn from that. Mm -hmm. We're learning a great deal of how we can fine-tune those, increasing in different places, fine-tuning in others, so that we end up um, not just adding economic benefit but multiplying economic okay. benefit. Okay. Uh, we're going to have to wrap right there, but I want to keep you around because we're going to go into have an afterthought segment that will be seen only on the web, so we're going to spend more time talking about this. We want to talk about health care costs, cost of doing business, some of those other numbers that are in here and really what they mean. So I appreciate that uh, being here. One quick plug. Yep. MDF.org is where you'll find this right. report. Good. I was going to do that. Thanks. Well, appreciate it. So stick around. You can catch more of this discussion in our exclusive afterthought segment seen only on the web. Go to mainbiz.biz and click on the Main Biz Sunday link. We'll be right back. Maine Biz Sunday is made possible in part by funding provided by the Finance Authority of Maine.